Wubble, Wubble Twig says, music today is like the background music of a rubbish rom-com where the couple are having a dinner in a high-end restaurant in New York and she spills her wine and they laugh and they laugh and they lock eyes and then they passionately kiss. And the camera pans out. No, that's me panning out. The camera's got to pan out. No, I can't pan the camera out. And across Central Park, and then the scene fades to black. And we all know it's happening then. That's it, Wubsy. That's exactly what... By the way, the YouTube thing has actually a picture of New York. I, I mean, it's it's called New York Jazz, so... Wubble Twig knows his music. Congratulations, Wubs. Tusmont McGee says, how do you actually manage your 200 buy and uh, roll? Do you literally play down to your last buy and buy and then get up or what? No, so what I would say is for, go for, for uh, and I have a decent amount of experience of this playing some lower stakes with a, like a lower bank roll. Um, if you've got 200 buy-ins, play to 100 buy-ins and if you dip below 100, you move down where you've got 200 buy-ins again and then you have to recover up to let's say 150 and then you can go back up and so you're kind of giving yourself that but it's about giving yourself the buffer zones um but um yeah obviously we don't play to naught like the, your and your bankroll is always what it is right now you, you can't be like well i used to have a big bankroll and i lost some but you know that there, there's there's no history in downswings and so if you've been on it this is something i think very intimidating but if you've been on a 50 buy and downswing you're not any more likely to stop you're not going to suddenly start winning flips even though you've lost a load in the past conversely and this i think is a weird thing to think about let's say you hit the million dollar spin you've been playing for 10 years you hit the million dollar spin your chances of spinning in the million dollar spin the next spin are the same as someone who's played for all their life and never spun it and that's a weird thing to think about now good luck to you if you spin million dollar spins back to back because i think you might be under suspicions if that's the case and i think you might struggle to get your money off site considering you've had a million squared chance of that happening sort of but yeah we haven't done the wheel at all have we yeah we're not doing it sorry maybe later you do exactly that's that's how it works yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'm owed, I'm owed a big spin, ladies and gentlemen. Subram says, what's the hourly rate playing $20, $50 spins? That will depend on how uh, skilled you are and uh, how many tables you play and things like that. But uh, we're not going to bluff this one, uh, I think. Yeah, we also interact a lot with what we want to fold. Sounds like ace, jack, ace, queen. Um, we'll just be checking. We have a bit of showdown, you know. Might win against the Queen Nine. Stuff like that. Hmm. Interesting. I mean it will be probably like a range bet board. And so does he check a ten on this turn? I guess he could. Not too many ten X's though. I do actually interact with some of them. Uh, what do you take four eight or something uh seven eight clubs or something and just bet check here yeah. tempting there tempting but i guess we'll check so cyber empire yeah w let's let's quickly answer your question so like let's uh lots of things it can depend on uh, such as are you playing uh, reg speeds or ultras or anything like that but i will assume you're playing uh reg speeds uh and i am assuming like kind of normalish win rates right so let's say uh, you're playing on um, stars with a 50 chip win rate and um, you're playing let's say let's say 60 at the at the 25s um, you should be making about uh, one dollar thirty a game um, pre rate back and so if you played two tables you might play 15 games an hour and you'd make $20 an hour if you play three tables you might make more but of course your chip you might drop a bit so that would be about $30 an hour that would be for the 25s or something or the 20s 50s uh, 
bit under double. So I would say uh, a good 50s grinder should probably make $50 an hour at long term. Um, and obviously some people can do more, some people can do less. But that's a good sort of solid target, I think, to aim for. So, yeah. Uh, Despo says, are you familiar enough with win rates for heads up pipers? ROI and BB100? Um, uh, like, I have some experience. And certainly, I could talk about EVBB win rates uh, for heads up pipers um, in terms of like small blind win rates, big blind win rates. But in terms of uh, EV ROIs, uh, like, I'm, I'm not familiar enough to give good um, suggestions there, I'm afraid. Okay, start with a check cool. Top pair. Not the best board, obviously. Any club times. Not much 8x in our opponent's range. And we do... I wonder if we have more flushes. I think the problem is we don't have much flushes because, like, 8 of clubs would be a flush we could have. And the 9 of clubs now is really the only check cool hand we have. And to be honest, 9 of clubs is also handy much as bet because I think people are fairly comfortable betting their cl clubs on the turn because they don't fear getting cherries too often. So we possibly would have just had the fold to a river bet there. Uh, we're obviously pretty happy that it got checked down. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I, won't, I, won't, I don't know. I won't say the hand. Lucky Well once donated some some uh, subs to the channel. Very kind of him. And so because of that, he has earned himself immunity from showdowns. Public showdowns. Uh, we're definitely cool here. Got some outs, got some overs. Got some possible bluffs or something. Start with check. Uh, if it comes a five, a six, an eight, we'll probably start with maybe try a bluff. Uh, if we go check, check. If we get a bet, we just simply fold. Seven's not a bad card for us. We have seven, two, seven, four, nine, four, nine, seven. Um, but yeah, we'll fold that one. Jam the eight, ten. Spin loves this. Hi, Tom. I have a question regarding ultras. I, uh, I can see how min raise SK and SP on the button is profitable against regs. However, could those hands be more profitable open shove against two recreationals? Thanks and good luck. Spin love, that is a very good question and uh, something I have uh, have worked on a lot uh, recently. And what I would say is it it really depends on the recreationals. So uh, there is a, there are certain people who just think, well, just shove them against recreationals because maybe the recreationals cool off with something dumb. And that's certainly uh, a reasonable line to think uh, recreation might call me off with ace four off or something and so I'll, I'll do that what i would argue against that however is that recreation also do strange things against min races so they might three bit shove those hands or they might flat and donk and, and all kinds of things so what it, what we can say is like if you look in a solver the evs for ace king are sort of laid out and you can see that like uh min raising and shoving aren't too dissimilar like min raising is a bit higher but not by a huge amount and shoving is x amount against the bad recreational we expect shoving to go up if they're calling too wide of course but also min raising is going to go up as well because they're going to make mistakes post and i think on the whole on average bad players will make more mistakes versus a min raise this is a very big generalization but more mistakes against a min raise than the shove because when they min raise suddenly they have more options and they have more decisions to make in the hand which means there's more chances of them making a bad decision. And I think that's the end goal, right, against recreationals. Can, will they make something, do something incredibly dumb? Not dumb, but, you know, incorrect or whatever. And I, I would always recommend it, min raising this king as a default. Now, if you see a guy call off, king for off, then definitely shove. If you see a guy, for example, not three bet shove, ace jack, or ace queen, or if he flats eight or something, then let's not min raise... Uh, like ace king you can actually just been raised a load of bluffs then but um yeah that would be my reasoning for continuing to min raise against nearly everybody still ace king and ace queen hopefully that answers your question spin love and thank you for it and it is a very sensible question and something definitely to think about call in the three five let's start with a limp Oh, just a bet. Oh, 
Okay. Let's we'll start with cool, I think. Just gonna check this. Uh, some 3x in the slaves range, obviously, and there'll be some flushes. 5, 6, 4x have all got there, so. Uh, we'll start with a check. I think if we face a bear, I don't think it's too much to cool here, to be honest, but. There you go, Galactic. Cog's got it. No shenanigans. And Osks. Yeah. Tomage was mold. Not only with cheese, but Dark Oak as well. I've been. So, my moldy. I've figured out what to do with them, by the way. So, this is a problem. For those of you who are newer to this Twitch channel, thank you for being here. But, um, one of the problems I've had is, uh,. Lots of empty cans of Coke, ooh, for example here, like lots of empty cans of Coke Zero are knocking about. And once on stream, I drank a really old one that had been there for maybe three months. And it, it, it had moldy bits in. So it wasn't, it wasn't the most, uh, uh, it's getting a bit bright. It wasn't the most uh, enticing to have little bits flowing about, right? Um, and so, my new thing now, I've been feeding it to a plant, right? So all this moldy Diet Coke, I've got I have a little cactus, and um, uh, I've been giving every bit of the moldy Coke to the, to the plant. Who would like to see what the plant looks like now? You're all furiously typed. Yes, I want to see the cactus. How is the healthy cactus looking that instead of drinking your moldy Diet Coke, he has drunk it, I forgot about that, uh, instead of drinking it, uh, I've been giving it to this plant. Would you like to see what the plant looks like now? It w now, think of a very healthy looking cactus plant. That's that's your starting point, okay? Let's bet this 46 here, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like now. Okay, healthy cactus plant coming at you. I'm going to do it from the top down as a little bit of a dramatic reveal. Oh, there's a cactus, and that's what it should look like. And this is what my cactus plant now looks like little bit withered that I've been given I don't know I don't know why it looks like that I've given all my moldy dark coat to this cactus yeah <laughs> I mean it looks like a weird sort of tarantula thing doesn't it it's supposed to look like that why doesn't mine look like that or maybe the whole cactus industry is giving us unrealistic expectations of what cactuses are supposed to look like. And maybe we need to appreciate that not all cactuses come looking like that. But actually, you can get a lot of joy from a really weird, scraggly cactus. Um, or maybe the cactus has drunk too much multi diet coke and therefore that's why it's not as turgid as it once was in its prime. But you know what? It still can be a lovely cactus, even if it's, it's trying its best, yeah? It ended up not really being about the cactus, but... <laughs> I'm calling Jack 3 to 1.5. I'm gonna win with a 5. No, it doesn't work, does it? Rubbish. That poor plant. <laughs> 